This is the first part of a series of Pearl Cast on fetal heart rate interpretation. In this first installment, we're going to discuss the normal and abnormal fetal heart rate and the significance of beat to beat variability. A normal fetal heart rate is traditionally reported to range between 120 to 160 beats per minute, but it's important to realize that with some fetuses, especially mature fetuses near term, heart rates as slow as 110 beats per minute can be completely normal. When the heart rate is greater than 160 beats per minute, this is referred to as fetal tachycardia. Common causes of fetal tachycardia uh, can be drug-related. Uh, Beta-sympathomimetic drugs like terbutaline are famous for causing fetal tachycardia along with maternal tachycardia. And then illicit drugs like co cocaine and amphetamines can, can also elicit this response. Maternal fever is probably the, the single most common cause of fetal tachycardia. It's strongly associated with intra-amniotic infections such as chorioamnionitis, but even maternal fevers for other reasons can produce an accelerated fetal heart rate. Lastly, fetal hypoxia is associated with an increase in the fetal heart rate, and this can often be a subtle and gradual increase over several hours. So it's important to keep an eye out for uh, changes in the baseline rate as these can indicate a deterioration of the fetal condition. When the heart rate is less than 110 beats per minute, this is known as fetal bradycardia. Again, drugs are famous for causing this, probably most uh, commonly beta blockers. So mothers who are often on these medications for either blood pressure control or heart rate disturbances uh, will frequently have fetuses with a slower heart rate. Also, uh, Cocaine is sometimes prepared with beta blockers uh, on the street to ameliorate some of the side effects. And so some patients who are using cocaine actually can present with a slow fetal heart rate. Uh, cord compression, especially uh, complete cord compression from something like cord prolapse, whether it's uh, a uh, visible or occult prolapse, um, often uh, presents with prolonged, unrelenting fetal bradycardia. Also, fetal heart, or heart block can present with a slow fetal heart rate. Uh, famous among these are fetal heart, heart blocks due to maternal autoantibodies such as the SSA, SSB antibodies seen in many connective tissue disorders uh, such as lupus and Sjogren's syndrome. Uh, rarely, uh, Fetal bradycardia can be seen as a pre-terminal event. This means in the moments prior to fetal death, there can be uh, an, a bradycardia uh, that occurs after uh, a either acute or prolonged uh, insult to the fetus. One side note, uh, if you see fetal bradycardia, or what you think is fetal bradycardia, it's always a good idea to check the maternal heart rate as sometimes uh, the heart rate detection devices can actually pick up a maternal heart rate instead of the fetal heart rate. This is uh, very common with Doppler uh, devices, uh, but even um, a, a fetal scalpel electrode has been shown to transmit the fetal, um, the maternal heart rate in instances where a fetal demise has already occurred. Next we're going to shift and talk about beat-to-beat -beat variability. The moment-to-moment -moment change in the fetal heart rate is known as beat-to-beat -beat variability and I like to view this as sort of a tug-of-war that is taking place between the sympathetic and the parasympathetic nervous uh, innervation of the uh, fetal heart. The sympathetic system results in a, a brief increase uh, in the fetal heart rate, and when the parasympathetic is predominant, uh, a, a brief slowing of the heart rate. So over the course of uh, a 10-minute window, you can look at the amplitude variation from top to bottom and assess what is known as beat-to-beat -beat variability. Variability are these uh, fluctuations in the baseline fetal heart rate from moment to moment. They are irregular in both amplitude and frequency. They're categorized into four levels. 
Uh, absent speed-to-peak -peak variability means there is virtually undetectable amplitude fluctuations. Minimal uh, ranges between uh, 0 to 5 beats per minute. Moderate is 6 to 25 beats per minute. And marked, or what is also sometimes referred to as a saltatory pattern, has an amplitude over 25 beats per minute. Now, in general, minimal to moderate beat-to-beat -beat variability is considered normal. Absent beat-to-beat -beat variability is uh, considered to be abnormal and potentially ominous. And marked beat-to-beat -beat variability can really be either. In most cases, it's just a sign of a highly active fetus. But there are associations uh, with this uh, extreme variability and fetal stress or distress conditions. Again, you look at this over a 10-minute window. The amplitude is measured from the peak to the trough of the uh, rate wave. And currently, uh, today, there's no distinction made between short-term and long-term variability, a distinction that was made uh, in the past. Causes of decreasing variability uh, are associated with things like drug administration, particularly nar narcotic administration, but also epidural narcotics, magnesium sulfate infusions, and benzodiazepines. Remember that even uh, certain deep uh, fetal sleep states uh, can uh, alter B2B -B variability. Variability is something that uh, tends to occur in the maturing fetus, so it's not particularly pronounced before 28 weeks. Another thing to realize is that as fetal tachycardia develops, there is usually an associated decrease in variability. Of course, our greatest concern about decreasing variability is its association with hypoxia and fetal acidosis. When you have minimal to moderate beat to beat variability, and in most cases, you can be assured that the pH of the fetus is probably 7.2 or greater. Now, you'll occasionally hear discussions about whether or not variability can be assessed by external monitors. And as long as you're using a second-generation monitor, which most monitors today are second-generation, then you can interpret b 2 b variability externally. This is due to the fact that modern computer processors use a technique called autocorrelation um, that makes the RR interval f between each heartbeat uh, accurate and therefore allows the uh, calculation of variability. This is the end of part one. In part two, we'll look at uh, periodic changes of the fetal heart rate. Thank you.